Hi, this is Rob with Longevity Learning Lab, and uh, this is part four of our turntable. Now, on the last couple of episodes, I went ahead, kind of showed you the overview on how we're going to make this thing, but we got our turntable made here. Put a little prime on there just to make it look a little nicer. And what we're going to do now, we're going to make the mount for this. And uh, we're just going to make it so I can fit it on this table here, and uh, so we can take it on and off as I need. So I don't want to have it too heavy for one thing. I mean the motor alone is going to be something. So what I'm going to do is we got our motor. It's a little half, half horsepower motor and uh, it's 110, you know, a typical industrial motor. And, uh, but I have to modify the little gear on it so I'm going to TIG weld that up and so I can put it on the shaft. I got my chain and then what I'm doing for the motor is my on off switch is also a speed control so I can go faster and slower but then I've also got it here another part of the switch to make it go forward and reverse you know it's like if the turntable's going and you're welding and say you made a mistake and you want to back up a little bit and so just there you go everything's all in one so we're gonna go ahead and put that on the mount now with the motor I'm gonna put it on the piece of piece of Delmar it's a plastic, it's you know like a PVC. Um, so we're gonna make a mount for that so it just keeps it for insulated for one, but it's also just vibration and stuff like that. It just helps. And we're gonna put that on our tube. And uh, the tube, also I'm gonna drill and tap some holes just to hold everything in place. So that will go here on top. And then with the other board, I gotta make one. That'll clamp it in there nice and tight. And so we go ahead and got our tabletop and then everything's going to be right there for you and then if you want to use a table for something else there you go take it off so let me go ahead and get ready to TIG weld up this gear and then we're going to probably have to cut something off of here too I haven't really looked at it yet and uh, I'll be right back okay well first of all what we're going to do is we're going to start off with that gear that I have to modify and what it is the gear that came with this motor that I bought it, uh, the ratio is not going to be what I wanted and plus the, the teeth on the gear aren't going to fit for my chain from the bicycle but what I'm going to do is put this other sprocket on and this sprocket here is actually from a bicycle too and what I like about it is the fact it'll go one way but then the other way it'll lock so that way it, it's you can tell when you're going right or left it won't you know it won't go one direction if you don't want it to. So to keep them all nice and centered I take the axle from that that back of the bicycle rim because it's got the race on it. So what I want to do is we take the old gear and we put it so we want to have it right here where the, spr where the uh, spokes used to be. Okay so what we do we set this in here with the race and then we get our flat washer here because that's where we're going to run our little bead around there, around that hub. Then we're going to take our other gear and we have to remember with the set screw on there too. So we want to make sure that won't be in the way of anything because we have to tighten it up because that shaft on the motor has got a little flat spot. And then we take the other race from the, the um, axle and we put that on there and it just keeps everything nice and centered. It's just like if you're using a countersunk screw for set lining up holes. And then we just eyeball it and then we'll be able to run our bead right across in through there. And it'll keep it nice and secure and it won't break off on you. And uh, yeah, there we go. Seat's in there nice. So what I'll do now, I'll just go ahead, I'll run a bead along there and I can still get in there with my, my Allen uh, wrench and we can set it on there on the axle and then we got our motor. So let's weld that up right now. Okay, here's our little sprockets now. I'm going to be running a bead right in through here. And we're nice and centered. So I just, is, you don't want to always go all the way around it in one fell swoop. Because for one thing, it's a bearing in there. You want to always keep that moving around. So you got to jump around with your heat a little bit. Cool it down if you need to. Get like a little rag with some water and just zap it with some water and keep it nice and cool. Now I also tried to clean as much as a grease out of it as I could, but you can't get everything. And plus, you know, this is not brand new equipment anyway. 
And uh, I made my little little sleeve right here on the table. That way this keeps it nice and from falling over. So let me go ahead and uh, run a little bit of bead and see how it works. It's coming along a little too hot right now maybe. Maybe turn it down just a little bit. It's a good thing my control's right here on my stinger. And I've got it set at a 75 right now, which could be a little warm. And then I'm using uh, the thoriated, a 16th of an inch thoriated tungsten. And I'm using a stainless steel, a 308 rod. And uh, so it's so far so good. Let's do some more welding here. Yeah, I turned the heat down, so now it runs a little bit better. You stay there and just jump around. Yeah, I need to cool it off just a little bit. We'll let it sit there for a second. And then we'll come back. You know, it's nice to have new stuff, but if you don't have the new stuff, then you do it yourself. Let me get a, a rag and cool this down. Okay, and then we just cool it down some. Oh, it wasn't as hot as I thought it was going to be. Let's come along here. This thing is going to be kind of crazy. That table that I found is going to work, but uh, I want to find something a little bit sturdier. That's all you need to do is have it up so you work on the turntable and then it'll fall over on you. Then you gotta watch out where I had the sprocket and the part of the rim where the spokes go. There are those little holes you have to fill in. And then I'll finish this up and make sure it's all nice and true and then we'll start. See now we're gonna mount the the axle onto the motor and the motor onto our base. See, and then now we're cooling it off even more. You don't want to cool it too much because everybody's going to worry about, oh boy, it's going to crack, it's going to crack. Well, if it cracks, then just weld it up again. And then you also, also remember where that set screw is right there, you can't weld underneath it. So just we jump around on it and jump around on it. It's not a cast cast sprocket anyway. It's a machine sprocket. So it'll hold it for our purposes, it'd be fine. And what I'm doing here, I'm extending my tungsten out a little bit. Well, not that far. Um, extending my tungsten out a little bit so I can get in there and uh, be comfortable out uh, with when I'm making my little little welds. I'm gonna finish this off here. And I'm walking the cup just a little bit. Keeping most of my heat up on the top sprocket. Now I go about a quarter inch or so, and then I'll I'll stop and then I'll I'll come back around over here and get this. And then I'll finish this up and then we'll, we'll proceed with the next step. Okay, now we got our gear. Our gear is ready to be put on our base here. And uh, we got our stuff set up here. And what I'm gonna do here is uh, get this set up for our next episode on part five. And then we'll get this base together and we're just about done. So I'm Rob and thanks for joining me on Longevity Learning Lab and join me for part five. Bye.